All right, so let's now study a case of infinite limits, namely whenever the function blows up at a point x equals to a. So if we go back to the example we had, so the function x plus 5 over x squared minus 25, so the graph of that function looks like this. So now we want to study what happens at this point, x equals to 5. So you see that on the right-hand side of this point, the function just becomes very, very large, while on the left-hand side, it just becomes very, very large, but negative. So we want to be able to define such limits here carefully. All right, so let me define the following limit. So f is a function which is defined on both sides of a point x equals to a, but not necessarily at the point itself. Then I say that the limit as x goes to a of f of x is equal to infinity. What this means is that the values of the function can be made arbitrarily large by taking s very close to a. So the function just blows up at x equals to a on the positive side. Now I can also define the same thing on the negative side. So if I write minus infinity here, what it means is that the function, the values of the function becomes very, very large, but negative when x becomes close to a. So if I go back to my example here, well, we see that on the right-hand side, I would have that the limit as x goes to 5 plus of my function is actually plus infinity because the values of the function become very, very large and positive, while on the left-hand side, it would become minus infinity because the values becomes very large, but negative. All right. Now, just a, a short note here on the existence of limits. Just, it's just a matter of uh, avoiding confusion. So we say that a limit here exists if it is equal to L, where L is a finite number. L equals to 0 is perfectly fine, but L equals to infinity is not a finite number. So in fact, there's two ways that the limit may not exist. One way we've seen already, if the right-sided uh, the, the right -sided limit and the left-sided limit are different, then the limit does not exist, and we write D and E to denote does not exist. Now, if the limit is infinity, meaning that the function blows up, then we still write this, but we keep in mind that the limit actually does not exist because plus or minus infinity is not a finite number. All right, so let's do some example. So the first example is the limit as x goes to 0, the function 1 over x squared. So when I deal with infinite limits, it's pretty often useful to uh, just use some sort of uh, shorthand notation to uh, see what happens as x goes to 0. So in this case, the numerator just remain 1, but the denominator as x goes to 0 becomes a very, very small number, and there's a square here. So this number will always be positive, regardless of whether I approach 0 from the negative side or the positive side. So what I write, this is not an answer. This is just shorthand notation to understand what's going on. I'm going to write 1 over epsilon, where epsilon is a very, very small number, and 1 over a very, very small number becomes very large, and it's positive. That's the important point here. Everything is positive, so I know that the limit here is actually equal to plus infinity. That's indeed correct. If you draw the graph of this function, well, you'll get something like this, which basically blows up to infinity on both sides, of the x equals to 0 axis. Okay, let's look at the more complicated example of the function 2x over x minus 3 uh, at the value x equals to 3. So I first look at the right-sided uh, limit. So I approach 3 from the positive side. Now what happens here? Well, the numerator just goes to 6. Everything is perfectly well defined. However, the denominator here will go to 0. But more specifically, so I take x to be slightly larger than 3, so 3.00001. So if I take a number which is slightly larger than 3 and remove 3, I'll get something that is very small, but positive. So I get something like this, which again goes to plus infinity. However, if I looked at the left-sided limit here, well, the numerator is the same, but the denominator here, so I would take x to be slightly smaller than 3, so 2.9999. So if I take that and remove 3, I'll get something which is very small but negative. So I'll get a minus epsilon here. So you see that this now becomes minus infinity. So that's the use of this notation. It's just to differentiate between plus and minus infinity. Now indeed, if I graph this function, what would I get? It's a little more complicated. So at x equals to 3, you get something like that. The function on the right-hand side will blow up to plus infinity, and the function on the left-hand side will blow up to minus infinity, so I'll get something like this, I think. Right. All right, so this is the function here, so you see minus infinity and plus infinity, which is exactly what we calculated. Okay, now 
I, when I, I, I graph this function, I, I just put a little kind of dotted line here at the x equals to 3 uh, axis. Now, uh, this, is, this has a name. This is called a vertical asymptote. So let me define what this is. This is going to become important when we learn how to graph functions more in more detail. So the line x equals to a is called the vertical asymptote of the curve if either the left-sided limit or the right-sided limit go to infinity or minus infinity or both. So in other words, x equals to a is a vertical asymptote whenever the function blows up, either on one side or on both sides of uh, the, the line. So in this case, for example, well, the function blew up on both sides, on one side to infinity, other side to minus infinity, so x equals to 3 was a vertical asymptote of the function. Here, x equals to 0 was a vertical asymptote, and so on. Okay, so let's do one last example, which is a little more complicated. So let's study the limit of the function, the trig function, tan, uh, where I take my point here to be pi over 2, and I take the limit from the right side, so for the value slightly larger than pi over 2. So let me first just do it using a graph of the tan function. So you probably know what the tan function looks like. It's a periodic function. has a whole bunch of vertical asymptotes. So this point here is pi over 2. This would be 3 pi over 2. This would be minus pi over 2. And then the function itself will be something like this. and so on. So it's periodic, so it keeps going like this, um, and so on. It keeps going on both sides here. All right, so now if I'm asking you what is the limit as x goes to pi over 2 here, but from the right side, so you want to approach pi over 2 from this side, well, you see that the function will just become very, very, function values will become very large but negative. So what I'll get here is just minus infinity. Now let's see if we could have gotten that without knowing the graph. So I'm just going to rewrite the limit as x goes to pi over 2 plus of tan of x. So what is tan of x? Well, this is sine of x over cosine of x. And now what happens if x is uh, going close to pi over 2? Well, the cosine here at pi over 2 will go to 0, and sine, sine of pi over 2 is just 1, right? So this will go to 1 over something which is very small. Now, what we need to determine is whether cosine of pi over 2 plus, so in other words, cosine of x, where x is just slightly larger than pi over 2, whether this is positive or negative. Now, what you can do is remind yourself of your trig circle. So you have your trig circle. I have a given angle here, say this angle, then the cosine gives you the, this, uh, the, the length of this side here, right? So now if I take my angle to be, so pi over 2 would be this vertical line here, so if I take the angle to be slightly larger than pi over 2, this will be my angle here, so the cosine will calculate the sine distance here, and this is on the negative side, so you see that in fact, Cosine of something slightly larger than pi over 2 will be negative, so it will be minus epsilon. So I indeed get minus infinity for the right-sided limit here, which is exactly what I get from the graph of the tan function. Okay, so this case was slightly more complicated than the previous cases, but that was just to give you an example of things that are not too easy. But uh, the main idea is always the same. You want to write it in some form like this, where epsilon is very small, so that you can determine whether the sign is positive or negative and then you see whether the limit is actually plus or minus infinity.